many of God's children are spiritual POWs, prisoners of war, trapped in a sin that they have been unable to break. Trapped in a situation that is contrary to the will and word of God from which they have not been able to escape. Whether it is alcoholism or drugs or pornography or gluttony or profanity, whether it is lashing out in anger and wrath and inability to control one's temper, they find themselves caught and unable to get out. There is a whole addiction industry today to help people get out of the vice grip that is holding them illegitimately hostage. And what many are discovering is that going to church hadn't solved their problem. Praying hasn't released them from it. I want to talk about the consequence of addiction that shreds minds, ruins souls, kills relationships because you find yourself caught. And even if that's not you, there is somebody in your circle of influence who finds themselves addicted. The biblical word for what the world calls addiction is stronghold. Because the biblical word stronghold is referring to the spiritual nature of the addiction. A stronghold is a spiritually based addiction, which means if you try to feel, fix an addiction, which is really a stronghold, without the right spiritual connection, you can't be released from it because you haven't dealt with the core issue that's behind it. So you just deal with the thing itself. In your kitchen, whether you have a refrigerator or a stove or an electric can opener, or a toaster, or whatever appliance you have, all of them are different, but they all find their power from the same source, electricity. Regardless of your addictions, it would take us forever to talk about this addiction and that addiction and this addiction and that addiction and this other addiction because they, are, they come in by the dozens. But I would like to submit to you that they all emanate from a common source. So if we can get to the common source, we can apply that source to the uniqueness of the particular spiritual addiction slash stronghold that needs to be addressed. We're living in a time when people find themselves stuck. Now my concern is not for the person who's stuck and wants to be, because I can't help you. If you're in an addiction and you want to stay addicted, all the facts and figures and truth and Bible can't change something you are pursuing. But I am speaking to those who are or who know someone who is, caught in a sin, know they are caught, doesn't want to be caught, but doesn't know how to get out. They are trapped in some scenario for which they cannot find release. And so this issue of illegitimate bondage must have a spiritual understanding underpinning it 
for full release to occur. Jason Biddle struggled with an alcohol and drug addiction for over a decade. I had this just lust in this now, this physical dependency that I had to use these drugs. And if I didn't have them, I'd be sick. When Jason was a boy growing up in Minnesota, he idolized baseball. When an injury thwarted his sports career, he got into construction work. The money became my new love. I mean, I was making tens of thousands of dollars a week in some cases, and I could spend it on whatever I wanted, um, you know, frivolously. Much of that frivolous spending went for alcohol. Bodybuilding also became a big part of Jason's life. To deal with a muscular pain, he began taking the painkiller, Nubane. It took away the pain, it was fine. And then I remember one time I actually hit a vein with it, and it was the best high I'd ever had. And then it went from working out to just shooting up Nubane. Later, Jason met and married Brittany. She had no clue about his substance abuse until she caught him shooting up in their bathroom. It became real clear to me that it was serious and I was, I just couldn't be with him the rest of my life. So I, I decided to leave finally after many threats that day, I, I left. Jason talked Brittany into reconciling and they started a family. Later, a friend invited them to a spirit-filled church where they heard the gospel and both responded. I wanted to learn more about Jesus. I wanted to learn more about faith. And um, I knew that it this was a true spiritual heart connection versus what I had had before. I just remember him doing the altar call and, hey, if, you, if, you, if you're not sure that you're going to go to heaven, you know, this is how it happens. You know, uh, you, you've got to confess with your mouth and, and say that you're a sinner. And, and you've got to believe that Christ died for your sins. And, and man, when he said that, just I remember just something came over me and I, I raised my hand and I just, I knew that I, I wanted that. Jason stayed sober for a while, but the years of drug and alcohol abuse had taken a toll on his liver and he had to have a tumor removed. When his surgery was over, he was prescribed more painkillers. The doctor told me, he said, you can never, you can't ever drink again because you're borderline seratic. Within the first week, I remember going to the liquor store and getting a bottle when my wife was gone. I like took the car and with a wide open wound, wide open liver, and I went down because the pills just weren't enough. I needed to have alcohol with it. One weekend, Brittany went away with some friends when she got an early morning phone call from one of their kids. He was calling saying that he couldn't wake up his dad. I got on the next flight home to Minnesota and um, met my parents at the hospital. And that is where they said, the doctors were saying he was just critically ill and I didn't, they didn't know which way it would go yet. Um, he, they had never seen anybody recover from such a, um, from the vitals being so low. When Jason recovered from his overdose, Brittany left him again. This was a turning point for him. She's like, you know, Jason, I, this, is, this has been going on for too long. I gotta protect the kids and I don't, I don't know if this is gonna work. And I'm like, God, if she doesn't wanna be with me, I deserve it. I surrender it all to you, Lord. And I, I give it all, I give it all up to you. you. You do with it as you will, because I just, I can't do it anymore. I think that that was the moment of absolute, true brokenness and surrendering. Upon his release from the hospital, Jason entered a rehab program at Redemption House in Minnesota. Addiction is, is always comes back to a heart issue. Um, it always comes back to our sick hearts because we want something that we, we want to fill something that we just can't. And then drugs and alcohol are an easy, just they're, they're just kind of an easy thing to, to fill a void with. I had these idols. I, had, I didn't know what idols were, but an idol is anything that we put in front of God. We were able to, to harness in what my idols were, things that I just really put in front of God that I held really close to my heart, and that was pride, control, and money. I loved those things. While at Redemption House, Jason also began writing songs with another resident. And God has opened up doors for a music ministry. I'm not ashamed of what happened because God gave me a story that he wants me to share. It's, it's becoming a ministry through the music and through my story that I can share the gospel. Jason is now clean and sober for good, and God has restored his marriage. With the old idols gone from his life, he now has a new focus. 
I'm just super blessed to have been able to find and be where I'm at right now spiritually with my wife and family. See, every single person has chains on them. They may not be physical chains like Peter had that are made of iron or steel. But every single person on planet earth is chained up in some way or somehow. And Jesus is the only one that can set you free. He can break every chain that binds us. Some people feel that they are chained and they are not getting out of their chains. They're not. The chains are so tight they are so thick, you know, they feel that they are so lost that there is no hope for their life. Now, a lot of people feel that way. And maybe it's because they have a certain problem. Maybe they're bound by alcohol. Maybe it's an unforgiveness problem. Maybe somebody hurts you, uh, a parent or an old boyfriend or whatever, and you just can't let it go. Maybe it's a drug a problem, a bondage to certain drugs and whatever. You have chains on your life, and it feels like you will never get free from them. And you seem hopeless. It doesn't matter how tight they are. It doesn't matter, you know, how long that you've been living that way. It doesn't matter how hopeless you may feel in your life. Jesus can set you free. And so the question is today, do you want to be set free? Because Jesus is the chain breaker. He can break any chains. He can set anyone free. Some people don't want to be set free. They like their sin. They like what they're involved in. And they're not looking for freedom. But if you're here today, you want to be free. You want these chains that are binding you to be set free. You want to be delivered. I'm here to tell you, Jesus can do it to you today. He's, it's available. Freedom is available today through Jesus Christ. Think about it. What chain is binding you? What what mistake, what sin is holding you captive today? See, there's no middle ground in this. You're either free or you're bound. You're not kind of in the middle. You know, you're either free or you're bound. See, I know what it's like to be bound, and I know what it's like to be free. And I'll tell you what, I'd rather be free. I'd rather have freedom. I'd rather have the chains fall off of me just like they fell off of Peter and those chains can fall off and you can walk out of here a new man, a new woman and not be bound anymore. So let's review again what we're referring to as we move forward. We're referring to a spiritually based trap in some category of life that has been inculcated with negative patterns of thought that like a snake has wrapped itself around the mind making something seem impossible to break or to fix because you feel handcuffed to it or it feels handcuffed to you. It is seeing something as unchangeable that is outside of the will and the word of God. Most people have run into something in their lives. Sometimes they're big, sometimes they are small, that is of less consequence, but yet addictions have a way of growing. They have built into them gateway potential, the capacity to expand themselves in our lives and in our circumstances. When you are in an addiction or better yet a spiritual addiction or stronghold, you feel like you're in a tomb, a prison, and somebody is thrown away the key. What many people seek to do with this stronghold that they're battling is to accept it as an inevitable reality and the best they hope to do with it is to decorate their cell. 
Since it's never going to change, at least let me make my addiction as pleasant as possible. Other people settle for what we might call sin management. Since I'm never going to get rid of it, let me do like a trash masher. Let me just press it down and pretend it's not there, which only creates room for more trash. And so they just try to manage it the best way they can. But today, I want to try to give a biblical mechanism for deliverance predicated on an understanding that Christians can find themselves in strongholds like non-Christians. You don't have to be saved for long to know that when you got saved, your flesh didn't disappear. Some of our flesh was so well trained when we weren't saved that when we got saved, the flesh looked at that as a new opportunity to show how strong it really is. Even the most spiritual person in the New Testament, the Apostle Paul, struggled with something he couldn't shake. In Romans chapter 7, verses 14 to 24, Paul says he was doing things he did not want to do. He said he told himself, you shouldn't do it. He said the willing was there. I was really serious, but the ability to pull it off wasn't. I kept promising God I'm not going to do it again. I kept promising God I struggled between my flesh and my salvation. And the two were not getting along. When Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead and gave him life, the Bible says he came up from his tomb tied up in his hands and his feet. Just because he had life didn't mean he was free. Jesus had to say, y'all got to loose him and let him go. I gave him life, but he needs freedom. So it is possible to have come to Christ, have eternal life, and still not yet be free from whatever the stronghold or spiritual addiction happens to be. Addiction is that dependency on a substance or an activity, an unstoppable craving. I need to have it. I can't do without it. It's like a compulsion a weakness, a fixation, an enslavement to something. And of course, there are many kinds of addictions. We are, can be addicted to food or to shopping, pornography, drugs, alcohol, gambling, internet. There's a whole range of addictions. Often people say, Jim, it's like I can't get out of it. I feel boxed in. And I have sleepless nights. And I feel a failure because I can't overcome it. There's no victory in sight. And I'm angry with myself because I'm not free yet. And such is the frustration and the utter struggle that people have when they are addicted to something that holds them like a vice grip. It's like a huge mountain which is unable to be climbed. And people with addictions need not so much judgment, but hope. What are the causes of addiction? Well, there are many. Sometimes people with very low self-esteem uh, have to get something to prop themselves up. They, they think they're rubbish. They're useless. So they turn to a substance or an activity which uh, comes over their lives and dictates their lives. There can be genetic factors. For example, if you are 
brought up in a family where many people have addictions and key seems to be come on you from the other members of the family. Could be peer pressure. You've got to sample it, do it, experiment with it. And all kinds of pressure can come on our minds to give way. What is important in terms of addiction is this, to get to the root of the problem. Not the symptom, but the root. And the Bible teaches us that the root of our problems, or anxieties, or fixations, or problems, or addictions, is a spiritual root. And once the spiritual root is tackled, then we can deal with the problem. A recent survey in Britain concluded that one in three people are addicted to something or have addictions. Now that survey might not be entirely accurate, but what we can say is this, many people struggle, are tortured by addictions of various types. And there is this darkness or as the passage says in verse 3, the despair that people feel not being free and not overcoming this addiction. What does the Bible say about freedom from darkness? Well, look at verse 1. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captives and release from darkness for the prisoners. These words are very special. Freedom for the captives and release from darkness for the prisoners. Now, in the Bible, there's something called the divine exchange. And I'll explain it to you very simply. When Jesus Christ died on the cross and rose again, he rendered sin ineffective. He defeated sin and the power of sin and the power of death and the power of despair. That is called the truth of the gospel. And the Bible teaches us that it's the truth or the knowledge of the truth or the application of the truth that sets us free. The fact of the matter is Jesus has done the work for us. He has broken or cancelled the power of all sin and addictions on the cross by virtue of his death and resurrection. But the other side of the equation is this. That's the truth. That's the fantastic truth. That's what we hold on to. But there's the application of it. There is the belief of it. There is the trust in it. And to make this truth real, we need to activate it. We need to say, Lord, your victory is my victory. I cannot overcome it in my own strength. There are societies and people and groups in the world today who are very helpful to people with addictions, absolutely, and be sensible and receive help. But the real issue above all other issues, is a spiritual issue. And when Jesus' victory becomes my victory, I am set free and released from darkness. 